welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am playing with a tool that I have had for probably, oh gosh, 10 years or more. Um, and it is a tool I love, just don't play with very often, it kind of gets forgotten. So um, I have a selection of sequins here from my stash. Some of these are from Amazon. And then the gems and kind of pearls that I had in my hand just then, those are actually from Blingy Thingy on Etsy. Um, and I actually incorporate a couple other colors as I go, um, just because I wanted to make more. These are kind of addicting to make, so um, I will show you those when we get to it. Uh, in order to make these tags, I'm going to make these little tags today. Uh, in order to do that, I have my crocodile from We Are Memory Keepers. I also have some grommets. Um, and there's brads and that kind of stuff in there as well, but uh, those come from Etsy, and, no, excuse me, from uh, Hobby Lobby, Paper Studio, and from um, Amazon. This is a Pink Fresh Studio tag set. I really like the shape of the one on the right. Unfortunately, that's not going to really work with what I'm trying to accomplish today. I need something that has more um, straight lines. So I'm going to use the tag on the left, the large tag. I'm showing you... Um, page protectors, and this is what we're going to actually use to make these tags today. Uh, however, as I got going, I was experimenting. Like I said, I haven't used this fuse tool in over a decade, um, and I thought it would work with these page protectors, and as I got going and was playing and experimenting, it was not working. So I end up using not these page protectors from Pin Gear, but what's in my hand just now in the left. Uh, those are actual um, scrapbook page protectors uh, from Paper Studio. Those are of a thicker plastic and they worked so much better. Um, I'm going to use this uh, sentiment strip die from Paper Studio. I showed you that little um, thing that makes like a dovetail. Uh, I don't end up using that today, uh, but I do use that largest tag. And then I'm using this holiday tag sentiment set from Altenew. And um, I'm going to use that to stamp my sentiment when it comes time. So first things first, I'm going to go ahead and start warming up this fuse tool. So it comes with, and I honestly don't even know if they still make this thing. That is something I probably should have found out before I started this, but maybe you have this in your stash and it was like, you, you're like me and it has just been long forgotten. So um, it's this little heating element here. The very end of that, it gets very, very hot hot enough that it's going to melt plastic. So um, what I have on here right now is like a little pinwheel. And this comes out, there is another attachment that will um, almost like cut uh, or, or pierce holes in. Um, I don't need that for what I'm using it for today, but this heating element gets really hot and um, it will melt your plastic. And that's what I'm showing you here. So I end up cutting those down. And something that I discovered is that the seam on these page protectors is very similar to the seam that that fuse tool creates. And so I'm going to just go ahead and use that seam that is on the bottom. Um, and I tried to cut these page protectors down so that I would always have that seam at the bottom. So I end up cutting them 
to where they're going um, widthways instead of lengthways so that I could always have that seam at the bottom. And I got about three of these large tags from each of those page protectors. I don't make scrapbooks pretty much ever anymore. I think these were left over from a uh, project I made for a family member's uh, birthday. And so I really don't have any need for them. Um, so I didn't feel poor, sad about uh, cutting these down and using them for these tags today. So all I've done is take that craft sheet, that Teflon craft sheet. As you can tell, I use that with my um, alcohol inks. It's very well loved. Um, and I am just running the wheel of this fuse tool along the metal edge of a die, of this die cut. And I have some heat resistant tape just to kind of help hold that die in place. I did discover that if you run over that fuse tool with the heat resistant tape or run over the fuse tool over the tape, it does not fuse. So it definitely deflects the heat, uh, which is its purpose. So it does it very well. And that tape was purchased off of Amazon. Um, and so all I'm doing is applying a fairly good amount of pressure and going over each of those sides at least twice. And when I take that off, all I'm doing is making sure that I leave the very top of the tag open so that I can fill it uh, with those sequins and, and gems that I showed you at the beginning of the video. Um, I'm kind of running my finger here, sorry that I'm out of frame, but I'm running my fingers along the back just to make sure that I can feel um, that texture on the back of that tag to make sure that everything has fused. Um, one of the things I discovered with that other one is that the back felt very fairly smooth and it was not fusing. It wasn't melting together and sealing. And so I go through and I'm just applying my tape using that bottom part as my seam um, at the bottom of the tag. And then I will tape it in place and again, apply a good, a good amount of pressure um, and run that fuse tool fairly slowly along the edge of that die applying that good pressure and going over it at least twice. And then before I move on to the next tag, I make sure, and before I typically take the tag, the die off, I check and feel along the back just to make sure that there is indeed some texture there and that it is indeed fused. Um, when I went to fill them, I did discover that some of, I had some holes. And so I tried before my heat gun before that fuse tool fully cooled to run over those again. Um, and as I was kind of going along and filling, mm -hmm. I discovered mm -hmm. that I did not uh, fuse everything very well in a couple spots, very small spots. And all I did was take a very clear pace of um, gift wrap tape, like scotch tape, uh, the clear stuff that you use to wrap presents and stuck it on the tag. Yes, you can see it, but it is not like in your face, like, oh, okay, she just stuck a piece of tape on there. That's weird. Um, it's not in your face obvious if you're not looking for it. Um, and that's how, because I did not feel like waiting another 15 minutes for that to heat up. We're under a time crunch on most days. So um, this was a way to kind of get around that. Uh, in just those few spots on a couple tags. I think there was three tags total out of all of these that I had to put a piece of tape on one spot and on all of all three of those. So not, nothing too, too crazy. Um, and again, I'm leaving that top portion open so that I can go through and fill them. Once I have done all of the fusing, I'm taking my little funnel here and I am just inserting my filler of choice. So like I said, these sequins come from Amazon and then the gems come from Blingy Thingy off of Etsy. And this little funnel was very, very helpful as far as being able to like fill these and um, not undo all of those seams. Some of the seams did kind of come apart a little bit. And when I go to like fuse this and completely seal it, I do go over those a couple of times, again, making sure that I have got uh, good adhesion um, on all on all of the sides. Like I said, I did miss a couple spots, but that wasn't the end of the world. 
just put a piece of very small piece of clear packing tape on it and no one will know. Um, so I just went through and went and filled all of these at the same time. And then I will go through and I using that same die, I will put the die back in place and uh, seal the top of it shut. And I do all of this in like mass production mode. I ended up making like 14 tags total uh, just because I was having some fun. I thought I was going to actually sell these at first and then I decided that I would just save these and put these on kids um, like teacher gifts um, throughout the year. I thought that would be a good use of them and something fun. Um, and really I was trying to kind of work through my stash of like gems and pearls and that kind of stuff. I've kind of gotten to the point where I know what I like and what I will use and what I won't. And as far as like embellishments and that kind of thing is concerned with other things, I want to have all of the options. I want to have all of the ink colors. I want to have all of the stamp sets. Um, but as far as like embellishments are concerned, I've discovered that I always gravitate to a few particular ones. And so I just need to kind of work through my stash and get rid of the ones that I'm not going to use. And this was an excellent opportunity to do that. So, um, the next part that I did is I went through and I trimmed. So you don't want to trim so close to that seam that it runs the risk of popping open if you bump it. <laughs> um, but you want to give yourself enough space that, um, you don't run the risk of that seam coming open, but you don't leave a whole lot of excess that it looks odd. So, excuse me. So what I did is I left about a little over an eighth of an inch from that seam. So about the shearing width of the blades of the, of, of my scissors. Um, and I just trimmed all of the excess away and that was, that was that it cuts really easy. Um, and then I'm going to take my crocodile. So this has, uh, hole punches on the top and the bottom. And there is a 3 16th and then, which is the size that I'm using today. And then there's a smaller one. Um, I'm going to use the 3 16th, which is the bigger one. And I'm just going to punch a hole through this plastic. So it doesn't necessarily punch, punch, punch is not a word people <laughs> punch. It does not punch a clean hole, but it punches enough of a hole that I can just peel off that excess plastic and get it out of the way. So you see me kind of, well, you would see me if I was in frame. That'd be helpful. Uh, I just peel off that little extra plastic and then I'm going to take one of those grommets. Uh, like I said, I got these from Paper Studio and from Amazon and I'm just going to insert that in and then I'm going to use the part that actually sets the grommets on this crocodile to set this in place. Um, and I, again, do everything assembly line fashion, mass production mode. I do all of this same step at once. So I punch all of the holes and set all of the grommets. Um, I trimmed all at once. I fused all but the top at once. Then I went through and fused all the tops. Um, I do everything of the same step at the same time. And that just really does help uh, speed things along a lot quicker. Now moving on to the sentiment. So I took this largest banner uh, or sentiment strip die from, I believe this is Simon Says Stamp. And I cut it out of just some plain white cardstock. And I have placed my sentiment in my Misty, uh, my mini Misty here. And this is me showing you that tape. You can see that one. But again, when you're not like, I think people will be mo more impressed with the actual shaker tag than they are going to be looking for imperfections. And again, this is handmade. This is not store-bought. Um, and I think it's okay. Um, Anyway, moving on. So I'm going to take a sentiment from that all to new stamp set, uh, holiday tag sentiments, and I'm going to take my VersaFine Onyx black ink, and I'm going to stamp all of these banners in the middle with a sentiment from there. This one says a gift for you. Uh, there are several that I could have chosen. I liked the scripty font of this. I thought it was very classy. And so I'm going to go through and on 14 of these, I'm going to stamp this um, the others I chose to left, 
to leave blank, but you could put to or from on the back of that um, somewhere, but I chose to leave it blank. So what I'm going to do is apply adhesive to this and then place it on the tag. And then I'm going to take one that is plain and apply adhesive to that and put it on the back. I don't want people to be able to see the adhesive through it. Um, and so applying another one on the back will give it a more clean and finished look. So because I'm applying something to plastic, I am using a dry adhesive. You could use score tape, uh, a tape runner like I'm using today. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily do a spray adhesive, but I suppose you could if that's what you've got on hand. I would just wouldn't use a liquid adhesive and I wouldn't use a like glue stick. I just don't think that a glue stick would have enough um, strength and liquid glue is very messy and will take eons and eons to dry. Uh, hot glue would melt things so I think your best bet is a dry adhesive like a tape runner or um, double-sided tape. So like I said I'm going to apply the one to the front which has the finished look on the grommet and then the blank one to the back which has the side that shows kind of how the grommet was pressed in and and sealed then I'm going to take a pair of straight scissors um, and snip off this excess I did toy with the idea of using colored cardstock using an ink that matched the gems or sequins that were in there um, I toyed with the idea of ink blending on this cardstock. Ultimately, I decided that I liked it white and plain and simple. I use um, mainly black thread today um, or, or black ribbon. Um, this is from Dollar Tree and from Hobby Lobby, so they're paper studio kind of brands. And all I do is I cut off a length and I'm showing you I show you two other ways to kind of apply a ribbon to this today. I didn't like the first two. This is the one I normally do where I take the thread, uh, the ribbon, loop it together, um, you know, fold it in half, and then take the um, closed side and weave it through and pull that end. I did not like how that looked. It looked weird because you could see the back of it and the grommet was down far enough that it just looked odd so it didn't like that one and I was trying really hard to make it work because that's what I usually like and that's what I'm used to didn't like it so then I tried just putting one end through and then tying a knot toward the base of this tag again toward kind of that to closer to the actual tag itself didn't like that also um, I felt like it again just looked really weird so we're going to go with the traditional probably one you see on everything else and i'm going to end up tying a knot toward the top of the tag to keep the ribbon from uh, unraveling if you heat set it um, and don't burn yourself i had my fans on and so the flame kind of went bananas <laughs> so turn your fan off before you do this but if you heat set it with just very quickly run a heat over the ends of the ribbon it won't fray so here's the front there's the back um, and they shake they are super fun I did them in rainbow colors again just trying to kind of work through my stash so thank you so much for spending time with me today I hope you feel inspired and I hope you break out with tools that maybe you haven't used in a while maybe you have this one um, thank you again and we'll see you next time bye